Mister. Run, Lloyd! Run for your life! <laughs> hey! You ain't garbage! Yes! Superlative! I was worried, Lloyd! fellows, but what can I say? It's Ambrosia Day in ye old school cafeteria. My saliva glands are gushing with anticipation of all those tangy flunk mellows smothered in mayonnaise. Uh, that's great. But no more singing, okay? It's gonna make us look like a bunch of nerds. I thought we already were a bunch of nerds. Not nerds, Kurt. We're dorks. Remember? Move it, dorks. See? So, okay, lunch lady, like food? Duh! Ew, it's ambrosia. Okay, I'm totally gagging. Remind me to have my lunch delivered from now on. I so will. Who will, to each his own. Lunch lady, if you will, one generous helping of Zambrosia. Sorry, Junior, we're all out. <clears throat> but we got plenty of stewed crater squash. Crater squash? All right! Crater squash! Crater squash! Crater but squash! That's not fair! Brittany and Megan cut right in front of us! They must be stopped! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't go tangling with conceited popular girls. Besides, look, over at the nerd table, Benny's got a plate of Zambrosia. Perhaps all is not lost. Why, hello there, Benny! Oh, hi, Douglas. That's a rather large mound of Zambrosia you have on your plate. I was hoping you might share it. Uh, sorry, but I'm not supposed to. Oh, come now, Benny. We all know that you absorb nutrition through your gills. What possible use could you have for a plate of solid food? He's saving it for me. <laughs> Why, it's Rodney and friends. I got no quarrel with you, McNoggin. Just hand over this ambrosia and we'll forget this ever happened. But what possible claim could you have to Benny's entree? He don't need it, so he gives it to me. Or else. Or else what? Or else this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. My stomach hurts from laughing, so I ain't hungry no more. Douglas, are you all right? I'm splendid. Oh, you're splendid? What about us? Yeah, we had a deal worked out with Rodney. We let him take our food and he leaves us alone. Now he's going to throw spitballs at us in class. From now on, you dorks stay away from the nerd table. Sorry. Oh, well, Douglas, I guess that was kind of my fault. I should have known better than to send you to the nerd table. It's a sad fact of middle school life, my friend. Nerds, dorks, snobs, bullies. When all is said and done, you're better off just staying with your own kind. All right, class rats, time for science lab. Ah, uh, science lab. Now that's more like it. You said it, Douglas. Just the four of us friends hanging out, shooting the breeze, while you perform our experiments. So don't think this time you're all gonna hang around blabbing with your friends while one person performs the experiment. Because today, I'm reassigning you all to new groups, with people you don't even like to talk to. Oh, man, new groups? That's right, that's right. Get it out of your system. Okay, group one. Oh, what now? Attention, Luna Vista students. This is Vice Principal Feely with a very important announcement. Hello, is this thing on? Is it on? Hello? Luna Vista students, as your teachers are aware, a brand new state-of-the-art school safety feature has just been installed in your classrooms. The ECPDS 5000. Oh, do we have to do this now? Yes, Mrs. Ball, we have to do this now. Students, you have no doubt noticed the most prominent feature of this new system, a big red button on your classroom wall. There it is. Now, I know that this big red button is very big and very red, but don't touch it! It's only to be used in extreme emergencies. That is all. Where's my coffee? Wow. What's the button do? Never mind what the button does. We'll talk about that later. Right now, it's time to meet your lab partners. I am so sure. Like, Mrs. Bolt, how am I supposed to concentrate on science when I'm surrounded by two nerds, a dork, and a nobody? I'm a nobody? Did I hear somebody say something? I don't think so. Can it, Duchess? We've got work to do. That goes for the rest of you, too. If you've got problems with your new lab partners, I don't want to hear it. Oh, Good. Glad we understand each other. Now, today we're experimenting with chemicals. When dissimilar elements are placed in close proximity, the result could be a violent reaction. Observe. Sodium tricarbonate, also known as common tentacle deodorant powder. When mixed with the citric acid in this finbat milk, the two compounds react, erupting into carbon dioxide foam. Now put on some goggles, do the experiment, and write down your observations. Oh. I have a question. What? Can we eat the foam? Because my observation is, mmm, yummy. No. I have a question.
Question two, are these lab groups permanent? Because if they are, I'm going to, like, majorly die. You can't expect me to stand near this big blue freak all semester. Hey. What if someone who matters walks in and sees me like this? I mean, my reputation will be ruined. Go implode yourself. This is bold! This is bold! We want a different group. Me too. I'm dying with these people. Oh, yeah, well, you're not so hot and sick. Right in Zool's name, what's wrong with you people? Quiet down and do your science. Well, at least we're getting along. Hey, who do you think you're talking to? I don't get along with nobody. Ah, I got milk in my Whoa. eyes! Oh. Why, you little... Ah. Knock it off! Knock it off! Break it off right now! You heard me, I said break it! Oh. ECPDS 5000 activated. Oh, that's just great. But, like, what does that mean? Please stand clear of doors. It means hang on, because we're all about to go on one heck of a field trip. Mrs. Bolt, how come our classroom is flying through space? Because we've been jettisoned, that's why. J -j jettisoned That's right. Separated from the school and shot off into oblivion. How did it happen, Mrs. Bolt? Was it sabotage? Was it termites? Roberts, get down from there before you fall and crush someone. <laughs> Sorry. I'll have no more hysterics from you, kids. It wasn't sabotage or termites. It's just part of our school's new safety system. Ejecting the classroom is what the big red emergency button is for. Although you're not supposed to press it unless there's an emergency. I kind of thought that you pressed the button, Mrs. Bolt. That's enough talk about the big red button. The point is, we'll be fine. All we have to do is follow procedures. Well, let's see. Where's that manual? Oh, there we go. Okay, activate control panel. Open viewing portal. And turn on homing beacon. One signal is received. Ah, all I gotta do is press this button, then a radio signal will be sent from an antenna on the roof. As soon as they receive the signal back at school, help will be on its way. Hooray! Oh, that's just perfect. It's jammed. I should have known that school board would be too cheap to install something that actually works. So what do we, like, do now? Should we panic? Nobody panic. Nebula! Yes, Mrs. Bolt? You're good at sitting around with a blank expression on your face. See if you can get everyone else to do that while I go out and fix the antenna. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, how come she just walked into the coat closet? Why, it's decompressing! Of course! Unbeknownst to us, our coat closet must double as an airlock! Huh, let's see. Well, this joint here. Do a little tightening here. And all we have to do is hook up these two wires. Ah! Oh, fantastic. What? What happened? Mrs. Bolt appears to have sustained an acute short circuit. Is she... Did she... Scrap metal, Kurt? I don't think so. I observed her rolling her eyes sarcastically as she floated away. A trip to the mechanic and she'll be fine. Unfortunately, she won't be much help in the meantime. You mean... That's right, people. We are on our own. Oh, great. And it's all you nerds' it's fault. We didn't start it. Those dorks did. Oh, yeah? Why, I <laughs> ought to... Guys! Guys! Hey! Quiet! Come here, look. The homing beacon. It's on. When Mrs. Bolt electrocuted herself, she must have fixed it. Oh, we'll be out of this pickle in no time. That's right. So let's stay calm. I'm sure back at Luna Vista they're working on a plan to rescue us already. Ah, good galaxies! Mrs. Pluvium! Mrs. Pluvium! Mrs. Bolt's classroom has been jettisoned! Really, Mr. Feely? Hang on. Yeah, we seem to be getting a signal from their homing beacon. Well, round up the staff! Have them report to the conference room for an emergency crisis meeting! Well, okay, but it'll take me 20 minutes to get them all together. That best? Great! Okay, everybody, now that help is on its way, I think the first order of business is to remain calm and comfortable. Put a cork in it, Nebulon. Guys, like, I don't know about you, but this whole classroom flying off the school thing has totally made my blood sugar drop. Oh, yeah, my blood sugar. Cool, so let's find out what we have to eat around here. I think I once saw an old tendril dog somewhere in my desk. Ew, uh, can we hear from someone who doesn't make me gag? Hey, I remember seeing something in that cabinet over there. Yeah, the emergency food supply. Out of my way, Seven Eyes. Hey, 
Here it is, and I got it. If you guys want any, you gotta do what I tell you to. Haha, <laughs> suckers. Hey, it's empty. Empty? <gasps> what kind of a monster would take an entire classroom's emergency food? Well, it was Fiesta Day, and the cafeteria ran out of chimichangas. It seemed like an emergency to me. Ah, that does it. I am surrounded by losers, all of you. The only way I'm going to survive another minute in this classroom is if I can pretend you don't exist. Come on, Megan, we'll find some food on our own. Not if we find it first. <laughs> Alrighty, now that Miss Effluvium has finished sharpening her pencil, I hereby call this emergency meeting to order. But Vice Principal Feely, where's Principal Forcefield? Principal Forcefield is out of town at a committee meeting efficiency seminar. Oh, maybe we should table this discussion until he returns. Normally I would agree with you, Miss Tronica, but since this is an emergency meeting to discuss an emergency situation, I move that we proceed. Will someone second my motion? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Giant Paramecium Thing. This emergency meeting is now in session. Our first order of business, a vote to resolve issues left over from last week's emergency meeting. Miss Effluvium will read last week's minutes, after which there will be a 15-minute break. Upon reconvening, we'll all be very hungry, so I'll open the floor for a discussion on where to send out for dinner. Uh, uh, I am so totally thirsty. I would give it anything for a cup of water. Here, girlfriend, eat some lip gloss. It's blueberry. It'll, like, help. Thanks, but I still got half my lipstick. Excuse me, ladies. What do you want? My friends and me couldn't help noticing that fruity smell. Maybe we could trade something for a bite of your lipstick? Uh, as if you could possibly have anything we would want. Like a scat! Sorry, guys. No go. Oh, well. Another drink there, Benny? Sure, Mendel. Help yourself. <laughs> So you really think you can catch a fish through that sink? Sink's got a drain, don't it? Drains drain outside, don't they? Outside is space, ain't it? And one thing I know about space, it's crawling with fish. Just stick with me, boys. I know what I'm doing. All right. I got two pieces of gum and some mustard on the inside of the sandwich bag. Anybody got an old piece of cheese? I kill for an old piece of cheese. I have five fingernail clippings and a spickle sprout. Anybody have a churro? Man, I sure could use a spickle sprout right now. Sure you don't want this old piece of cheese? I told you, I don't like cheese. But oh, what I wouldn't do for just a lick of mustard. Well, guys, we've looked everywhere. There's nothing to eat and nothing to drink. Uh, uh, look, it's the science supply cabinet. And that means there's a big yummy jug of tentacle deodorant powder. Wait a minute, Kurt. If there's tentacle deodorant powder, that means there's also a big yummy jug of Finbat milk. All right. Attention. Gentlemen, like I always say, it pays to hang out with your own kind. Now the four of us can kick back and enjoy this disaster in comfort. with a small asteroid. There's nothing to worry about. The classroom seems to be intact. Oh, no. It's a catastrophe. We're doomed. What are we going to do? Poor frightened little fools. Come, let us reassure them. When we get back to Luna Vista, perhaps they'll remember which group of stalwart lads held their cool under... <gasps> Oh, man, the asteroid knocked us toward that planet of molten lava. Where do we tell them about this back at school? I don't think we'll be able to, Kurt, because suddenly it looks like we're never going back to school again. How long do you figure we have, Douglas? Judging by our current speed and the apparent gravitational pull of that planet, 20, maybe 30 minutes. 30 minutes? That's almost half an hour! But enough already! Stop cheering because there is nothing to cheer about. I am a cheerleader and I should totally know. But half an hour before crashing into a lava planet is better than less than half an hour before crashing into a lava planet. Hardly. Either way, we're never getting back to school. I'll never make it to high school and be the homecoming queen. I'll never be the homecoming queen's best friend. So don't jump around all happy because this is absolutely the worst thing that has ever happened to me. <laughs> Great job. Now you depressed him. You know, Brittany, I've had it with you. <gasps> like, excuse me? All you ever think about is yourself. Duh, who else would I think about? I'm the one that matters. Look, maybe back at school we all thought you being pretty and knowing what was cool was really important. But I'm not going to waste my last half hour caring about some girl who doesn't care about me or my friends. You want to be a popular girl now? Try being nice for a change. Come on, buddy. <laughs> 
Well, guys, it's been a pleasure knowing you. Me too. Likewise, Lou. You said it, man. Au revoir, mes amis. <laughs> Rodney? Hey, go away. I was not crying. You better not tell nobody. Hey, it's okay. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Easy for you to say. But if kids find out I'm crying, they'll think I'm weak. How am I going to scare them for their lunches if they think I'm weak? Oh, come on, Rodney. Everybody already knows you're weak. They do? Well, sure. If you were strong, you wouldn't go around trying to make yourself look strong by picking on us all the time. I mean, really. This need you have to prove yourself, that's what gives us the willies. So, it's cool with you if I'm scared? Sure. <laughs> Thanks, man. I love you! So, like, it's a drag being all depressed and whatever. So, here's some lip gloss. It'll make you feel better. Thanks, Brittany! How do I look? I mean to eat. Oh. Mmm, floozleberry. You know, guys, it's too bad we can't always be like this. Heading toward a deadly planet of lava? No. I mean, getting along with each other. Check it out. We're always so worried about what people think of us at school. But now that we're not going back there, we could just be ourselves. If we always got along like this, we never would have gotten into this mess. Oh, what cruel irony that such insight should occur too late for us to benefit. Hey, guys, good news. Brittany and me are going steady. Yeah, uh, but you don't have to actually hold my hand, okay? Well, I can't crash into a lava planet without a steady boyfriend. How lame would that be? Besides, in a freaky way, Kurt is sort of sweet. Hear that, guys? I'm freaky sweet. And Kurt, as your girlfriend, I think it's only right that I apologize for complaining about you being my science partner. Now that I'm facing oblivion, the thought of having to mix chemicals with you doesn't seem so awful after all. Thanks, Muffin. Wait a second. Hello, Douglas. Don't be jealous. No, it's not that. It's what Brittany just said about our science experiment. Don't you see? Brittany might have just stumbled onto a solution that will save us all. <laughs> I don't get it, Douglas. What are you talking about? Tentacle deodorant powder and Finbat milk. When mixed together, they have a violent reaction erupting into a frothy carbon dioxide foam. If we could find a way to mix them in an enclosed space, here, say, in this airlock, and then release the pressurized foam into space. It might change our course, just like a rocket engine. Precisely. Well, I can miss the planet entirely. Yeah! Not only that, Megan, but observe. If we can gauge the chemical reaction precisely, we can actually shoot ourselves close enough to the planet to become caught in its field of gravity. This will pull us around the planet's far side, building up our momentum until we emerge here and break free, shooting back in the direction of Luna Vista School. We're going home! There's just one problem. One of us is going to have to stand in the airlock and mix the chemicals at just the right moment, allow the pressure to build up all around him, then open the outer airlock door. I'll need a volunteer. Come on, guys. Finally, we're learning to work together, to act as a team. But for that to keep working, each one of us has to do his part. There's got to be somebody, just one person, who's willing to rise to the challenge before us. Hey, thanks, buddy. We all really appreciate this. Oh. Now remember, Lloyd, when I say so, dump all of the milk onto the pile of deodorant powder. A crushing pressure will build up all around you, but don't open the outer door until you've counted to five. Hurry! We're getting close! Zool will be with you, Lloyd Nebulon. Thanks. Your attention, please. I have a very important announcement to make. The results of the secret ballot are in. For our emergency meeting today, we will be ordering an early dinner from Zacco's Venuvian Noodle Shack. Everybody, please make a selection from the takeout menu. Oh, I don't know. People, people, look! There it is! The classroom! It's come back! Well, good work, people. Job well done. Absolutely. Oh, I believe we succeeded! Yeah. Boy. Boy. Lloyd, can you hear me? Talk to me, Lloyd. Did I do good? You did great, Lloyd. 
Thanks to you, we're back at school. Just relax, Fred. You're going to be fine. <sighs> Thanks, guys. You know, for a while there, I wasn't sure we were going to make it. Now they're all alone, getting all burnt up in an open airlock. Well, funny things start going through a guy's head. Like what, Lloyd? Like, what if the world we had, out there, the one where people treated each other with dignity, where Rodney was actually friends with Benny, and a girl like Brittany might actually go out with a guy like Kurt? What if we all decided to make that world our world, back here at Luna Vista? A school of respect, of encouragement, and fairness. The perfect school. A school of dreams. Uh, you see, we're not, like, crashing into any planets anymore. Yeah, and all that sappy stuff out there, I kind of already forgot about it anyway, because it didn't really happen, right? Um, perhaps we can work on it? For Lloyd's sake? Um, well, I... Thanks, guys. I get a really good feeling that things are looking up already.